Hello, my name is Alana Crum, and in this video, we will be discussing fluoroscopy with bronchoscopy. By the end of this video, learners will be able to identify the major components of a C-arm, position patients to minimize radiation exposure, demonstrate the appropriate use of protective and monitoring equipment worn by staff, list fluoroscopy settings that minimize radiation dose, and determine when to turn off fluoro when taking a transbronchial biopsy. Fluoroscopy is often used with bronchoscopy during transbronchial biopsies. There is no clear evidence that fluoroscopy decreases the risk of pneumothorax, and some providers never use it. However, it has been shown to improve diagnostic yield for masses and can make transbronchial biopsies technically easier. Here is the C-arm used in our bronchoscopy suite. We will review the key components of all fluoroscopes, though there is some variability between C-arms. This is the x-ray source. The x-ray beam travels from the source through the patient to the image receptor and converts the x-rays into an image which is projected on the monitor. This is a separator cone, sometimes called a spacer. It is often removed to fit the unit around a bed or operating table. If the separator cone is removed, it's important to keep the patient at least 30 centimeters, or about a foot, away from the x-ray source to avoid skin injury. Now let's take a closer look at the C-arm control panel. KVP is the voltage or tube potential. Increasing the voltage increases the penetration of the x-ray beam, which can be helpful when viewing deeper structures, but actually reduces image contrast. The milliamps of the x-ray beam can also be adjusted. Higher milliamps are needed for viewing dense or thick tissues. However, typically we do not need to adjust the KVP and milliamps ourselves, but can use presets to help keep the radiation dose as low as reasonably achievable, or ALARA. ALARA is a standard in radiation safety, aiming to minimize radiation exposure to both the patient and the providers in the room. By selecting the Auto button for Automatic Exposure Mode, the system calculates the needed voltage in amps for an optimized image. This helps improve the image quality while minimizing the radiation dose. The Auto Mode is usually adequate for bronchoscopy. Be sure to also select the Low Dose button. This will preferentially minimize the amount of radiation delivered and help keep the radiation dose as low as reasonably achievable. Additionally, pulse dose fluoroscopy should always be used. Instead of emitting a continuous x-ray beam, the fluoroscope emits intermittent short pulses of x-rays. The typical settings include 30, 15, and 7.5 frames per second. Decreasing the number of frames per second makes for a choppier image, however dramatically reduces the radiation dose. It's best to choose the lowest pulse dose needed for an adequate image. Now that we are familiar with the C-arm, let's review important pre-procedure safety measures. Prior to starting the procedure, ensure that all staff is wearing protective equipment and a dosimeter. All personnel not behind a radiation shield or barrier need to wear a lead vest and skirt or a lead apron, and everyone should be wearing a thyroid shield. You can see the lead vest and skirt combination protect both the front and the back of the wearer. However, the apron leaves the back unprotected. So anyone wearing an apron must face the x-ray source when the beam is on. To ensure that this happens, be sure to instruct all unfamiliar staff prior to the procedure to face the beam and remember to loudly announce fluoro on when you hit the pedal. Lead aprons or vests can absorb between 90 and 99% of radiation scatter, depending on the thickness of the lead. However, they leave the extremities and the head unprotected. Increased rates of cataracts have been documented in fluoroscopists, so lead glasses should be worn. Additionally, fluoroscopists should take care to avoid irradiation of their hands, which are at the highest risk for chronic exposure. Be sure to keep your hands out of the direct beam unless absolutely necessary for the procedure. While we do our best to limit our radiation exposure, dosimeters are used to monitor our cumulative exposure. They should be worn outside of the lead apron at the collar and should be kept outside of the bronch suite when not in use. 
Pregnant personnel can receive additional monitoring or sometimes can be excused from radiation exposure work by disclosing their pregnancy to the institution's Radiation Safety Officer, or RSO. The RSO can provide a second dosimeter to wear underneath the lead shielding at the waistline to measure the radiation exposure, making it through the lead protection. All dosimeters are turned in quarterly to monitor your radiation exposure. Another important part of pre-procedure preparation is positioning the patient. Be sure to keep the skin surface as far from the x-ray source and as close to the image receptor as possible. The distance from the x-ray tube affects skin radiation dose, but not image quality, while the distance between the patient and the receptor impacts both. Keep in mind that the lateral or oblique position usually places the patient's skin much closer to the x-ray source, therefore increasing the skin radiation dose. Positioning your patient as far from the x-ray source and as close to the image receptor as possible helps minimize the scatter of x-rays, which decreases radiation exposure to personnel in the room. However, the most important way to reduce radiation exposure is remembering to manage the beam on time. That means use the fluoro beam only when necessary and take your foot off the pedal as soon as you can. Fluoroscopes have an audible alarm that will sound after the total beam on time has exceeded a set threshold. You can continue using the fluoroscope after the alarm sounds. It just serves as a reminder to the operator. Now looking at the pedals, you'll note that one has a plus symbol. This pedal is for boost mode or high dose mode. Boost mode improves image clarity but drastically increases radiation dose. You typically do not need boost mode for most bronchoscopy procedures. Bronchoscopists vary in how they use fluoroscopy when taking transbronchial biopsies. Some just tap the fluoro pedal to get a single image showing the forceps location when taking the biopsy, while others prefer to watch all of the movements of the forceps under fluoro. Let's start by reviewing this approach. Once you've maneuvered the bronchoscope to the right airway, insert the forceps into the working channel and watch the forceps enter the subsegmental airway of interest. Then turn on fluoro when you can no longer directly see the tip of the forceps. On the fluoroscope monitor, watch the forceps advance until you feel resistance or until the tip of the forceps are within a couple centimeters of the chest wall or appear to be within the mass. Then retract the forceps a centimeter or two, open the forceps and advance until you meet resistance again, then close the forceps. Once the forceps are closed, turn off fluoro hold the forceps closed for a second, and then retract. This approach can be very useful for learner bronchoscopists so that their supervisor can monitor them closely and provide feedback. An alternative approach that uses less radiation is to take a spot fluoro image right before taking the biopsy sample, just to make sure that the forceps appear to be in the correct location. If you are taking transbronchial biopsies from a mass, rotating the C-arm to take images in more than one direction may allow you to confirm that the forceps really are in the mass. After you're done, be sure to document the radiation exposure. Your institution will have a system for recording the radiation dose of each procedure. This may be in the procedure note or in a separate log. If the radiation dose exceeds 5 gray, you should instruct the patient to monitor for skin changes or signs of damage and arrange to see the patient in clinic four weeks later. However, in the bronchoscopy suite, the relative radiation dose is extremely low with the average dose at our institution around 12 milligray. So reaching a dose that will require follow-up is extremely rare. In this video, we have reviewed several ways you can minimize radiation exposure for your patients, yourself, and others in the Bronx suite. Remember, the patient should be at least 30 centimeters from the x-ray source and as close to the receptor as possible. The fluoroscope should be set to low dose, pulse dose, and automatic exposure mode. Ensure all staff know to face the x-ray source when the beam is on, and remember, loudly announce fluoro on every time you use the fluoro beam. Most importantly, minimizing the time your foot stays on the pedal is the biggest way to reduce radiation exposure for both your patient and yourself.